Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Mr. Sacedo's YouTube videos. Today we're going to be going through the difference between ideal gases and real gases, so make sure that you're following along with your note packets, then if you have any questions, you ask. Alright, so we've been talking about ideal gases, um, and so we have the ideal gas law, we have the combined gas law, and something that we didn't really get to talk about is that every single gas that we've been going over has assumed that the gases we're dealing with are ideal gases. So what makes a gas an ideal gas? So here's the definition of an ideal gas. It is a set of randomly moving, non-interacting particles that have no mass and take up no space. So in other words, ideal gases are impossible. Okay, but it gives us sort of a model that we can use to describe how gases behave. So here's the thing. So like if I had a gas, uh, gases are randomly moving and relatively speaking, non-interacting particles, meaning that they just kind of bounce off of each other and bounce off of walls and stuff. But the big kind of problem with ideal gases are that real gases take up space, obviously, and have mass. So ideal gases are literally like points that I would never be able to really see that just sort of randomly move around, don't interact with each other, and bounce off of the inside of containers. And if that seems weird, it should, because it's something that doesn't exist in nature. But the weirdest part about this is that real gases like hydrogen or nitrogen or carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide, they actually can behave like ideal gases under the correct conditions. So what are these conditions? Under low pressure and high temperature, even real gases can behave like ideal gases. And the reason why is because at a very low pressure, so if pressure is low, what do we have going on in here? Well, we have gas molecules that are really spread out, so they have a lot of room to move around in, which means that they're not really going to be interacting with each other, and it's going to be as if they don't, you know, take up that much space in comparison to the container. At high temperatures, uh, so if we have, you know, a lot of heat or something under here and our temperature is high, now we have molecules or gas particles that are going so fast that they are going to be almost impossible to interact with. Um, they're going to have so much energy that they're going to bounce off of everything, including each other. So even if they were, you know, relatively polar, they're not really going to be interacting with each other like you would expect. Um, so that means that under the correct conditions, like low pressures or high temperatures, you can actually get real gases to behave like ideal gases. And that's very important. So what sort of governs the properties that ideal gases have? It's called kinetic molecular theory, or KMT, and it does a pretty decent job of explaining or describing these properties. So the first one is that gas particles are extremely small so that they take up no space. Again, not something that is true, but something that we use in order to describe the properties of ideal gases. The gas particles are always moving, which creates pressure. That is absolutely positively true. Gas particles are always moving because if they stop moving, they become liquid. And um, they definitely do create pressure by bouncing off of the inside of containers, just like you see in this picture. Next thing, gas particles do not attract nor repel each other. Well, here's the thing. That isn't true. Um, you know, gas particles can be attracted to each other but under proper conditions, you know, like low pressure or high temperature, that effect is minimized. And finally, kinetic energy directly relates to the temperature. So a change in kinetic energy and a change in temperature are pretty much synonymous. And again, those two are correct. So these two aren't exactly correct, okay? These two, so one and three, uh, do not really explain the way that real gases behave. Okay, but the thing is, under the right conditions, like low pressure and high temperature, um, our real gases actually do behave as if they take up no space and as if they are not really attracted nor repelled by each other. But these are the four important uh, tenets of kinetic molecular theory. And that's it. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask tomorrow.